Okay, guys. In this video, what I want to get, what I want to do for you guys, is address something that I've been hearing over and over again about this brand of amplifier. So many people give this company a bad name for having a poor frequency response. On paper, this Triumphs MD8000.1 is to believe or stated to do, I think it's 10 hertz, all the way up to like 20,000 hertz, something way beyond uh, the base frequency in which I'm going to be using it for, and far below. I'm not going to be using this thing at 10 hertz. To me, that's home audio. I'm not going to be using it for that. I'm going to be using this for car audio. Okay, so the thing is, the frequencies I'm going to play, it may reach into the to the to the upper 20s, all the way to like 60 hertz or so. That's it. I'm I'm not planning on doing anything else with this. But for those out there who have been hearing these same rumors about this thing having horrible bass quality, horrible frequency response due to that, I'm gonna I'm gonna run my own test for you guys right here. And I'm gonna run it with this subwoofer right here. This is a the Toro Force 12S. Okay, this is a 2000 watt SPL subwoofer. Which doesn't, technically it doesn't even supposed to have good frequency response uh, anyway. But I'm going to see if this amplifier right here can push it at 10 hertz. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it from 10 hertz all up to 60 hertz. I'm going to give it a sweep and I'm going to see what it does. Just for my guys. You know, I've been hearing this for so long and I'm just, I'm kind of like sick of hearing it. Because the thing sounds really good to me. I don't, I don't have a problem with the way it sounds, and I've run a lot of uh, amplifiers before. I've listened to a lot of systems before. I've had uh, half bridge amplifiers. This is a full bridge amplifier, and there's really not that much difference in the technology. You have less components inside of this thing. That's why it's smaller, and they are, for the most part, not bridgeable. That's that's pretty much the only difference between this technology and the other technology. So why are people giving it such a hard time? I don't understand. You know, but, you know, for my guys, I'm going to see what this thing can do. I'm going to make sure that this thing here is not doing something crazy. Because at 10 hertz, it's just going to make this thing, um, you know, just fluctuate all over the place. I'm, I don't want to do that. But what we're going to do is get this thing going. Okay, that's 10 hertz, and as you guys can see, hopefully you can see that. I guess you can't see it on camera. The cone is already moving. It's mo I'm gonna turn it up. Let me turn it up. Put it on 30. That's a 10 hertz frequency response right there. And you can actually, I can't believe I can actually hear that a little bit. Uh, because technically you can't hear 10 hertz, but you can feel it, right? So I can actually feel vibrations in this room coming from this thing cycling at 10 hertz. That's 10 cycles per second. So whoever said, I mean, just looking at it that much, whoever said that this thing can't do it, it's full of it. Let's put it on about 40 or so so you guys can really see it there you go what are they talking about my whole room is shaking right now my whole room is shaking 10 hertz okay so y'all need to stop man let's put that down this ain't warm and that thing that was taking it like a champ 10 hertz so that I mean let's just keep going for the sake of the video we're just gonna keep going put it at 15 15 hertz and yeah I know it's self-explanatory if it can do 10 it can do all the other ones 15 hertz for anyone out there doubting what this thing can do 15 hertz guys talking about frequency response and what it sounds like you guys need to stop 20 hertz 20 hertz stop lying on these people uh, companies man 
Stop lying on tire amps. There's nothing wrong with these amplifiers. 25. Now you actually start hearing some real noise coming from it. 25 hertz. You see that? Stop lying on this amplifier. Why? I don't know why y'all giving it such a hard time. For the money? 30 hertz. You're not going to see it move much because it's getting closer and closer to its, um, to its uh, box tone frequency. The frequency of this enclosure is 35 hertz, and when I put it on 35, that cone is going to not look like it's moving at all. I'm going to put it back. Let's put it back. I think it was on like 30, wasn't it? I'm going to put it on at 35 hertz. You're not going to see it move at all. Maybe a little. Watch this. That's how you find your box frequency. If you don't know the frequency of your box and you don't have fancy equipment to figure it out like a DATS or something like that from Dayton Audio, then just, just do this. This is an old school test. Cycle through your frequencies. Well, first get your volume adjusted like I did. Put it on like, I don't know, like half volume, right? If your system, Whatever your system go to, put it at half the volume and start very low so you can get the cone moving and work your way up and when that cone starts almost like it's standing still that's your tune frequency for that enclosure okay we're gonna ship do i even need to keep going you know what i'm saying it doesn't make sense how hard how hard they get this thing such a hard time man let's put it back on 30 and i'm gonna be done i'm gonna be done with this Alright, I'm done with that. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn a little bit more about how to simplify car audio, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Stop giving this company such a hard time, guys. For everybody that was on the fence about buying one of these, because you heard somebody say something about poor frequency response and all that jazz, tell me budget base tested this thing from 10 hertz all the way up and it sounds just fine okay well the fans don't sound fine <laughs> if you want to complain about this thing complain about these noisy fans that's what you can be complaining about i hate those fans i'm actually thinking about taking them out and putting some computer fans in it because they're a lot quieter but anyway this video is just to prove a quick point. There's nothing wrong with these amplifiers and the way that they sound. They are meant to amplify whatever signal you give to them. But other than that, man, stop lying on this company. Now, I, I, you know, I haven't had anything other than a smart. I had the smart series, the smart three. I had that one. But the MD, the, I'm, I'm guessing the MD lineup probably is consistent throughout as far as the way they had it board laid out and they're filtering. So I'm, stop lying on the company, man. So what is you guys' take on this? Is Tariums being treated unfairly or do people have a valid excuse for criticizing the frequency response of these amplifiers? Specifically when it comes down to the MD series, this one I have on the bench, I think it performed quite well. I also want to know if you guys think that this is an adequate enough test, and if not, tell me what you think that I should do differently or add to the test. I'll be more than willing to do so if enough of you guys actually request that. In the meanwhile, if any of you guys have a shareable link that you can share with this community, leave them in the comment sections below because all opinions are welcome on this channel. Thank you and see you in the next one. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Bass here and I'm out.